All right, everybody. Figured I would create a video on this because I don't think it's ever been done before. But this is how I swapped a Ford 8.8 .8 independent rear suspension into my Corolla. And from the factory, these had solid axles. And I believe it was the same for the AE86s also. But as you can see, it actually fits decently well. Now, this is gonna be a track car for me, so it's really, really wide, which doesn't hurt me at all. In doing so, I was able to retain stock axles out of the Ford 8.8. .8. This makes it so that everything is actually pretty cost effective. The diff itself, I got out of a junkyard for $175, and it actually has a factory 373 LSD. And then the knuckles themselves are actually out of a newer model Ford Explorer. So I believe those were 07 and up. Now the 07 and ups have different mounting. The old ones didn't have any sort of through bolt mounts. They were like steering, kind of like tie rod hind joints. It's where you just kind of slid in a ball joint and clamped it down. Where these ones actually have bolts that you can go to and mount to. Now I have mine rotated 90 degrees, so I built this secondary mount to actually keep tension on the toe itself. That way it doesn't actually rotate as it goes through its motion. But it fits pretty well. And even the output stays right in the trans tunnel. I was able to use, let's see, the factory mounts for the front. And the bolts aren't tight just because this is going to come in and out a few more times. I still need to get it coated. But using the front mouse and just kind of building a brace for the very front of the diff. And then kind of taking the backs and actually going to this rear structural support that runs across the back. Now these arms work. Pretty, real, pretty well. As it goes up, it doesn't actually have hardly any camber gain, just a tiny amount, as the upper arm is slightly shorter than the lower arm. It's something to keep in mind, whenever you're making arms, you need to have three points of contact, otherwise it can freely rotate. Now the bottom arm, super, super solid, because we have those two separate heim joints. Whereas the upper arm itself, I actually kind of created two separate mounting points by spacing out the mounting itself so it can't rotate as much. Now, it does rotate a little bit, but I'm not concerned about it because the, the shock mount's actually gonna go on this arm. So all the pressure is gonna be pushing this arm down. And as I lift it up, it doesn't actually rotate this way anymore as long as there's pressure here. But as you can see, it actually comes out pretty well centered in the wheel well. It is very, very wide though. As you can see, the face of the wheel bearing itself is actually wider than the car. Just a little bit, not a ton, but it's definitely wider. Now I haven't dialed all this in yet as it hasn't gotten an alignment but it does all fit. I think the total cost for this, minus the tubes and fabrication is like a 400 for arguably one of the strongest, best independent rear suspension axe differentials you can get. And they have a wide variety of ratios. There is something to pay attention to is not all these diffs came with LSDs in them from the factory. You kind of have to pick and choose and do the research on what actual trim numbers came with those. But it is possible to source them and find them. You just have to be very diligent and make sure that you don't get that isn't an LSD because that adds about another $200 to the total cost. Now you can get these shipped to your door, but there's no real way to verify 
that what you get is the correct ratio or the correct LSD. So if you have any questions on this, shoot me a comment, a message, wherever you see this and I will get back to you. But it does fit and I can actually get almost everything up above the factory frame rails. It's very, very close. I think this is maybe an inch lower than the actual frame rails of the car. So yeah, this should be, I believe the undercarriage stampings of the T72 is exactly the same as the A86. I could be mistaken, if I am, let me know and I'll correct it, but I do believe they are the same because they both came out with solid axle rears. And I know those can be a weak point when you start pushing power through these. Now mine didn't even come with any axles or suspension, so I was kind of forced to figure out what to do. And this seemed like the most logical way to overbuild the crap out of it so nothing breaks. All right, hopefully this gives you a little more insight on how I did it. If you have any questions about it, let me know. But like, comment, subscribe. I'm not really trying to keep any secrets, so if you want to know something, just ask. But if you like this and want more Corolla stuff or more performance stuff, uh, just stick around because I plan on doing a bunch more of these. Alright, have a good day. Keep learning and doing stuff.